I'm Dr. Frank Dobson. I am faculty head of Gillette House, also director of the Bishop Joseph Johnson Black Cultural Center, here with the wonderful, talented, lovely, and handsome Harry Coordinators. Um, my name is Holly Pritchard, and I'm one of the three lovely and handsome um, area coordinators. I specifically work with Murray Sutherland and Gillette House. I'm Kate Reed. I'm another one of the three. I work with Crawford East, Stambaugh, and West Houses. I am Greg Fontes. I am the third of the three. I work with Hank Ingram, Memorial, and North Houses. I'd like to first start by talking about a couple of quotes from the book. And I won't even read the whole passage. It's in the middle of 122, but he says this. One writer goes so far as to call our leading colleges propaganda machines that might as well have been designed to ensure that the class structure of American society remains unchallenged. And clearly what he's saying is that we need to challenge that. But I would argue that we also need to challenge ourselves. When you come here, you need to make sure that not only are you seeking those things that make you feel comfortable and make you feel at home, but seek those things that will expand and enlarge your horizons and give you some sense of, you know, we always use the word diversity on college campuses. What does that really mean? I think for each one of us individually, that may mean placing myself in a position of discomfort, where all of a sudden I may be seen as the other, where all of a sudden I'm wondering, okay, can I fit in here? Do I understand the language? Do I understand the religion? Do I understand the gender or the sexual preference? And maybe I don't. But maybe by listening and communicating with these people, I'll gain some knowledge that will help me change a little bit. What do y'all think about that? I had really active parents, you know, growing up, and I had a great home life, and um, they really instilled some some solid morals um, and thoughts for me. And I think I think a lot of students have that um, in some way or fashion. Somebody who um, invests in them morals and ideals, but. You know, coming to school, I think it's a, for me, I, I came with the understanding that those were good morals, you know, and those were good ideas, and that's okay to keep those ideas. But it's also equally okay to step into situations or to be so open minded in classes. I took a class on religion, um, and I had grown up, you know, a certain religion, and, and they talked about stuff that I had not really heard about before, and I, my seat was rocked, you know what I mean, in, my, in that classroom. But to where so I think the really essential important part is that when you're sitting in a classroom or when you're sitting in a social scenario or when you're in um, a, a, you know, a, a room or hanging out with friends or at the lunch table, it's essential to be open-minded yes. um, and to at least embrace what other people are saying, um, whether you take up those ideals or morals or whether you don't. Um, but I think it just it builds your character as it builds your tolerance and understanding um, for your equals, so. And, and I think that is the essence of the college experience, you know, understanding and appreciating the difference of thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, challenging yourself to, you know, go out to another religion class, you know, let me learn about this. That's beautiful, mm -hmm. you know, because now you begin to appreciate there's thought, there's, there's things that shape the character of another individual who has the same goals as you. And it's all interconnected, yes. yes. And so I, I think it that is. that is such a beautiful thought. And so I would encourage, you know, the incoming class to to go out and branch out, you know, to, to learn about something new. This is Vanderbilt University. How I, college in general is a playground to me. It's like a, a, a science lab. You experiment. It's a chance to do it. And no one will judge. Everyone's here to appreciate you. Everyone's here to... To, 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 to go through it with you. And so I think it's just a beautiful thing. I think, um, and, and this goes back to what both of you just mentioned, but to be able to come in and prepare yourself for a vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So prepare yourself to, to learn from those that you don't expect to. Right. That there are lessons that you can learn from texts, from classrooms, from faculty, from individual conversations or from spending time with your mind open pondering. Um, but that also means that there's a vulnerability and sharing of yourself. And so um, if, if there is a way that you can prepare yourself for that, I think that that can help a lot with getting to what you two are talking about, to being able to get there. There's, there's a breaking down of walls that has to happen and a breaking down of expectations. Um, and then we're able to meet the challenges that have been put forth. 
to learn and, and become our future collegiate selves. Acceptance, tolerance, your your roommate is going to be different from you. Um, yeah. They, this might be the first time that you have lived with somebody like, I, I personally grew up with a canopy bed and had a little lace covering and I had pink like carpet. Like for a princess. Yes, I had yeah. a pink carpet and I had a little like quilted, you know, a little like quilt that I had and all my stuffed animals were on the wall. And then I came to college um, and I had, I had um, <laughs> like cinder block walls and it was like a concrete floor. And for me, it was so cool because I was like, oh, first time by myself and Vivian, you know, my roommate and all this kind of stuff. And my dad went nuts because he was like, it does it. It's not pink. There's no stuffed animals. You know what I mean? He just went off the wall. And so I think, um, I think parents like, you know, really want the best for their students. Um, my dad wanted the best for his daughter. Um, but that was the best for me. I loved those cinder, cinder block walls. Um, did I love Vivian? No, I hope she's not watching this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, we weren't best friends. She would sit in her room all the time and watch Gilmore Girls, you know, and I wanted to go out and, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I can't do Gilmore Girls anymore. Uh, but she'd watch it all the time and then she, we did not click. And that, that was okay. No, I didn't have an awesome relationship. We weren't besties with me and my roommate, um, but I found other good friends outside of that. But I tolerated her and I, I enjoyed her company when we were together. And if that's all it was, then that's great. That's what being a roommate is supposed to so be. So maybe we need we, maybe we maybe we've talked so much about the ideal of college with mm -hmm. the ivy colored walls mm -hmm. and covered walls and all of that. Because there's another side. Yeah. It's not perfect. No. And there's stuff that happens. And I I was a commuter on undergraduate level, but in graduate level I lived on in a dorm, in a residence hall. And my first roommate, I had to move out after a semester because he was doing stuff and I was like, I'm either going to kick your butt or I'm moving out. So I moved out. And so, yeah, college, it's also your encounter with the imperfect. Yes. It's yeah. your encounter with and what you didn't expect. impedes on your space um, and that's not comfortable. Um, yeah. And that's where you live. That's not the classroom. That is where you live. So where do you go to get away? Do you know what I mean? You have to confront the situation. And it can be the classroom because you can or be in this classroom and this the professor frightens the out of you mm -hmm. or he or she has an accent and you can't understand them and you're like i got to get out of this class mm -hmm. i had you to know? switch majors at Did one point because of that oh i was i was failing i had never gotten a 40 in my i was like an all a <laughs> complete student i got a 40 in a class because i couldn't understand my professor mm -hmm. and so i dropped the class and then i realized it was required for the major um. and i switched majors <laughs> <laughs> it's awful nice. But it was a really, it was a time where I, I was failing for the first time. I was struggling. I didn't know how to talk to that professor. I was embarrassed to say, hello, brilliant man. I can't understand a word you're saying. Um, it was awful. I, I, I love working at college. I'm glad I had before four years. I don't need to do them again. I learned so much. You learned so much. There's no room. Learned those lessons. There's no room. That's the reality. <laughs> it, it, it will be difficult. It yeah, will that's be difficult. the other piece, yes. It, it, you know, it, it's going to be something we're not you're not accustomed to. You're going to come in, you're going to have a roommate you may not have never known and you never saw in your life. You may have a roommate who is very who's an international student who wakes up at 4 a.m. to pray. Mm -hmm. You may have that. That's true. And the room smells. And the room may smell. Yeah. You know, uh, you may not get sleep because someone's coming in 4 in the morning from going out, you know. Classes will be difficult. It's just going to be, it will be difficult. So it's going to be a change. And so that's all a part of, you know, what Kate mentioned earlier, of being vulnerable, of being open to that, you know, accepting that. And, it, and it's about those bonehead decisions that you make that then you have to suffer the consequences. I, I can remember, I don't know how many times I pulled all-nighters because mm -hmm. I had a paper due, and guess what? I didn't do it on Friday, even though it was due on Monday. So Sunday night... My butt is up all night long, mm -hmm. and at 7, 8 o'clock, I'm finishing it up, and I'm old. So this is before computers. So I'm typing it, oh. right, <laughs> with whiteout. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm finally getting the 25-page paper and walking it over to campus and then thinking, okay, when can I now go to sleep? Yeah. Because I've been up all night. And so that's, that's a part of it, too, isn't it? I mean, that whole notion of 
encountering the difficulty, but some of the difficulties are of your own making. Yes. Yeah. There's some lessons you have to learn the hard way, and that's But learn sad. from them. But yeah. yeah, but then you don't have to do it again. Yes. <laughs> you went through that experience for a reason, so you could ingest it, learn from it, not do it again. So. I've got a question for you, Kate. Mm -hmm. Vulnerability is the word you use. So is college about making oneself vulnerable, do you think? Is it about opening up oneself in terms of this whole notion of being more vulnerable? What do you think? I think that that's, I think that that's a way to be successful. I think that mm. um, when shutting, shutting down or shutting yourself off, which is a really normal uh, response to fear, which there are times where college can be scary, especially that first night. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe not lived in a residence hall before. That's a little scary. But yeah. um, the opportunity to sort of acknowledge fears and then let them <clears throat> fall away, I think, allows for greater learning. And so that that is something that, and it takes time. It might not happen the first day. Yeah. It might not happen the first semester. But I think that there's an opportunity that if you can acknowledge fear and move beyond it, you're able to learn in really different ways. And classroom learning is great. Yeah. It is highly encouraged, please go to class. Um, but then there are a ton of other ways that you can learn. And yes. um, what's wonderful is once you graduate and move on, you can keep doing those. Yeah. And so that's what I, I think is important about vulnerability is being able to learn ways that you can continue to learn. So. No, no, that, that's perfect yeah. because I, I think for all of us here, in, my, in our various roles, we all have various roles here, we're about the creating of safe spaces where one can be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't really see this perhaps, but we have a table on this other side of the room and much of the time, not only does the Gillette House RA staff, including Holly and I meet, but our House Advisory Council meets and groups of students meet. And we have a seminar room across there where we meet and, and have Gillette gelato and eat pizza and hear speakers and watch you know movies and talk about them and, and and all of that kind of thing and clearly we're always about the creation of safe spaces when we get together so that one can ask the question or learn from the speaker or ask this other student who's coming from a different country what was it like living in brazil or what what made you come to vanderbilt and and again in doing that one does grow one becomes more vulnerable because one realizes I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and I've never been to Brazil. What's it like? And, and so those educational moments that we've all experienced happen when one gets in those places that are safe spaces that I think we're all about creating. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's, that's a really important piece of, of being able to learn in our houses here, is that we feel safe. I do, I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's room to talk about <laughs> She's crazy. making like acknowledging that you've made bad friends. Oh. And that you can you can be like I made I met these people the first week of school. They are dragging me down and or I'm dragging them down. Let's go a different direction because you do. Like you meet people the first day. They're next to you. They're the room next to you. Um they're in your visions group. They are just adorable at the lunch table um, and you meet these people and it's great that first day because you're meeting people and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing at college and you're making friends and then a week in you've gotten in so much trouble because you're hanging out with this person and together your ideas become the worst ideas ever <laughs> it's okay to step away it's okay it to, to be busy when they want to hang out it's okay right. to you have Use to study. your homework as an excuse to, to get away from negative relationships and make friends with new people. And you don't yes. have to wait until January to do that. You can do that in September. <laughs> yes, you can. And not, not everybody comes in and has their best friend in their roommate or has their best friend meets them at the, uh, the adorable person at the oh, lunch so table. Funny. You know, or maybe it's hard for you when you're standing in line to the founder's walk to like talk to people. That's okay. I'm awkward too. Do you know what I mean? Like everybody is, everybody feels, everybody feels that awkwardness of, can we be friends? Like I have not met you yet. And it's, it, it is difficult. Um, and so, yes, you're not on an island of one. I think there's so many times that I have used that phrase um, when talking to students who say, oh, I haven't 
met my group of friends yet and I haven't I don't you know go out on a Friday or Saturday night I don't have anything to do and I feel left out I'm I'm all by myself and I look at those students and I say no you're not because I had somebody in here 30 minutes before saying the exact same thing um, and so you're not by yourself but that doesn't mean um, that you need to just sit idly by I mean yes you can loaf and yes, you can think use that time to think and ponder things um, but also use that time to go out um, and, and check out like different activities. I, I have never played volleyball, and guess what? I like it. I tried that in intramurals, you know, and I, I enjoyed that. And so, kind of stepping out of your comfort zone, um, joining some of those clubs and organizations, you have to work a little bit harder sometimes to, to bump into people that you're going to be friends with. Um, and so, seek out those people. And find a study p place or space. I mean, whether it's the library, because we do have any number of libraries. I mean, really, seriously. I meet students and I say to them, have you been to the library? And they say, no, ever? Well, I don't have to go, I just... But even if you no. access everything no. you need on your computer, it's really a nice, safe, quiet space. Mm -hmm. If your hall is noisy, to get away. Mm -hmm. Or a coffee shop, or whatever. I like because, to with caffeine. Yes, mm -hmm. because we all need those havens where we can kind of get away and really hunker down. And so for me, much of the time, it's the library. But you need to find that place and that space. And Vanderbilt has any number of nooks and crannies where you can do good, positive things mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. and I think it's all about just be yourself. It's okay to be yourself. Don't be someone that other people think you should be. Be yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and so if you don't want to go, you know, racing, playing, if you don't want to go LARPing or something, don't. <laughs> if you don't want to, uh, you know, go out and see the town, then don't. Be yourself. Because when you're true to yourself, that's when that you're genuine. You know, and we can appreciate that. You know, when you come and say, hey, I'm not the type of student that parties. I don't want to go party. I just want to stay in and go to the library. But my friends don't want me to. It's not about them. It's about you. It's your experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the great writer James Baldwin, I mentioned I, I, I studied under him, has this quotation, and somebody's asking him about all different kinds of things, and he says, you have to go the way your blood beats. And he says, you have to live the life that, that you're given. If you don't live that life, he says, you won't live any life at all. And I think that that's true, that you really have to be yourself. Because if you're not, who are you? And college is about discovering who you really are because of those challenges and those choices and those decisions and, that's dis and that discomfort that's going to inevitably happen. You're going to come here to Vanderbilt and something's going to happen, some places, some spaces, you're going to encounter where you're uncomfortable, whether it's the accent of the professor or your roommate or, or the class you're taking or the major that you thought you wanted to major in and you realize, I really don't want to be a doctor. I want to be something else. I want to be an economist. And so that discomfort is going to help you find out who you really are. There, we've created, or you can be in a bubble. Do you know what I mean? Like you can eat and sleep and um, get toiletries, like anything that you <laughs> want, like a toothbrush at the common center. Do you know, yeah. like you can do all of these things and it's a self-functioning place. Um, but sometimes it's really nice to be like, oh, I need to step out for a second, open the door. Um, and just right across the street, you know, there's all these fun little restaurants and little boutiques and coffee places. You can study down there. Um, and so that's, it's literally what, five minutes, a five minute walk. Yeah. Five minute walk. It's great. We live around all these other colleges too. And so I like studying among other people, but I get really distracted when I study near my friends. Mm -hmm. And so I go over to other college campuses and we'll take my books there. Sometimes I meet cool people. Usually I get more homework done than if I did it here because um, I would talk to these guys. Um, problem, we have a shared office. I get very distracted. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of different things that you can try. Maybe you take a friend with you, or maybe you uh, pop down to Hillsboro and get a cup of coffee down there, do some celebrity watching. Or go to the Bell Court, which is this wonderful art theater that shows all kinds of movies, foreign films, art films, independent films, classics. And they have nights that are called flicks where students can... Um, go there and a faculty member leads a discussion on a film. I've done, I've led flicks before. And so take advantage of the bell court. You'll see some films that you probably won't see anywhere else. Oh, um, theater and uh, music on campus. That We have some talented individuals 
here. Um, and in the surrounding schools, there's very talented individuals as well. Um, and so student concerts tend to be free. Um, so really, it's right in your backyard, do you know what I mean? Just And it's your peers um, performing what they're going to do for a living and what they do for a discipline. And it's um, amazing. Um, it's, it's just amazing amounts of talent. So take advantage of that. You should be able to talk to your roommate, um, usually via the internet, before you get here. Do it. Maybe it's not like, oh, what color is our room going to be? <laughs> Maybe it's, oh, hey, I have a fridge. We I don't, have, I don't have a Yeah, awesome. Then we don't have a ton of stuff in our room yeah. that is not yet ginormous because we're just starting out in life. Um, and keep your favorite, favorite, favorite things at home. Oh. I think like the most precious things. Like I had a really great necklace um, that my my mom gave me, um, but I kept that at home. I have it with me now because I'm an adult and I have, you know, my own space. Um, but if something's really precious to you, leave it at home um, because we don't want it to get lost or fumbled or something like that. Borrowed. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> leave your pets home. <laughs> That's yes. a, kind of a big one. Uh, you don't want you any fish. Yeah, you can have fish, but you know, the dog and the cats. Bring a picture. Yeah, you can bring a picture. Bring a That'd picture. be great. I like to Skype with mine. <laughs> I, you guys are laughing. I do it. You Skype with your pets? Mm-hmm. My mom has a lot of dogs, and I like them, so we Skype. That doesn't surprise me at all. Actually, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Perfect sense. So you you can you can do that too. Um. You can Skype with your dog. <laughs> and don't. Don't bring more than you need. Do you know what I mean? You'll, you'll acquire things. Um, things will, will appear in your room at the end of the year when you're packing up and you're like, ah, oh, I had no idea I had this much stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, pack essentials um, and pack everything that you need. Um, but I don't, I don't need four winter coats. I got one in a rain jacket. Do you know what I mean? Rain boots, bring your rain boots. Um, don't bring alcohol. Don't. I think that's... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. See, See you soon, soon 2017. 2017. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs>